the, the population is probably now, it's very much levelling out in the Northern Territory. It's reaching what was its, its historical abundance. So, it, it, you know, it's gone from a remnant where, where when I started working on them, there was a real question as to whether crocs could survive. You know, you, you, you could fly all the rivers of the north and not see one crocodile. And there were just some little ones around and some adults that were hidden away. So a dramatic change over time. Uh, but we're there. We're almost there. Crocodiles are a boom and bust animal. They're, they're, a lot of the time their stomachs are empty. They don't need to feed every day. They, uh, in the wild, they have trouble finding enough food especially now the populations are up. So they're an animal that, that puts, stores the fat in discrete fat bodies. And if they go through a time of lean, lean, they use that, that fat. So it's, you know, experiments we did, they don't eat a lot. A crock this size would survive on maybe one chicken a week. They don't burn up a lot of energy unnecessarily. And it's if it warms up, their metabolism goes up, so they use more food, they need more food. That's why crocodile attacks on people tend to be in the, the wet season when it's warmer. It's not that it's the mating season, you know, it's not that they're, they're going around full of hormones trying to find a person. It's that they're warmer and they need more food and probably in the mating season everyone sorts themselves out. So a croc moves out of where it's used to living, is warmer, He's swimming because he's had to move. He needs more food, becomes more dangerous. Look at him, the left one and the right one. And you know, the testes are formed in the embryo from part of the, the kidney and the kidneys right underneath them in here. If you just open that in there. So when you have little crocs, like little everything else, the testes are pretty small and they've still got that sort of shape. but but once they get to maturity, and a saltwater crocodile at least only gets to maturity when it's about 3.1 metres long. So it's got to be a pretty big male before it gets mature. And then you can really see that in the testes suddenly become, you know, swell out and become large. They mate like the male, you know, gets on the female and the female's much smaller, remember, and rolls the tail underneath and then, you know, inserts this weapon in to do the damage. But what we do know is that in, in the wild, much more than one male can mate with one female. So that the clutch of eggs is multiple paternity. That um, when you catch animals, you can just, it's easy to get them to exert the penis. You can take a, a swab up there and you soon see whether it's mature or not. So if you're working on a croc species, you can, you can just sample that and when you, you, you look along, you, you just absolutely, it's a knife edge that where they've got semen, they don't have semen. Ours start nesting in even October, November, right through to even May, June. So it's a much more prolonged period. So in the, in the survival stakes, especially with things like climate change, it's likely that salties will be around a lot longer than alligators because if, or freshies, if the, wet season and the hot season mix up a little bit, there's going to be no time left that freshies can nest successfully. So they'll go extinct, same with alligators. Whereas salties have still got a six month period for this pulse nesters versus these long nesting period ones. So these are probably quite secure.